seemingly invisible obstacles that are in our way. So um, what I want to talk about today is specifically is how I got my over under. And if that makes no sense to you, it definitely will here in the next couple of minutes. Um, as I've mentioned in some previous posts, in previous videos, um, especially from the three-day challenge, if you did that, um, I actually think I left you on day three assignment with this, with this um, kind of a prompt to think about what are those missing links for you in your health and fitness journey. What have been those things that have kind of like a lack of knowledge or a gap in knowledge, a gap in um, understanding maybe even, not so much knowledge, but just, you know, I have so much knowledge, what do I do with it kind of thing. Um, what are those gaps in knowledge or gaps in understanding that are keeping you from taking that next step forward? Like, okay, I know that I need to, you know, eat better, but how? Like, how do I eat better? Um, what does that look like? Am I supposed to not eat gluten? Am I supposed to not eat carbs? Am I supposed to go paleo? Like there's so many messages out there, right? So knowing you need to eat better or improve your nutrition is one thing. That's a very overarching idea. So maybe your missing link like it has been for me is how do I eat? Okay, I know I need to improve my nutrition. How? In what way? How should I be eating now? Um, so that's kind of what I want to be sharing about today. Your missing link may have more to do with um, how to exercise or getting over a weight loss plateau. It may be having to do more with um, pushing forward and eating differently and living a different lifestyle, maybe even than the people in your own household with you. Um, maybe a lack of family support or um, other health challenges, financial challenges. I don't know what those things might be for you. Um, chances are they might be a lot more personal and they might just have a lot to do with, you know, self-defeating thoughts and feelings. A lot of shame related, um, shame related concepts that again, I address in more depth, um, from our free three day mindset challenge. So if that's what it is for you, if you think it's more of just a mindset of holding you back. Um, I definitely encourage you to check out the three-day uh, mindset challenge that is down here below. <laughs> There's three videos um, labeled very clearly, um, especially day two. I feel like I'm losing my voice. Especially day two that, that deals with shame. So let me take a quick drink here because I feel like I'm turning uh, into a frog. And then I'm going to get started um, with what I really wanted to share with y'all today. So. I love this. I made my coffee at like seven this morning and it's still like at a drinkable temperature. It's not a Yeti. It's a Bubba. Shameless plug. I don't have any affiliation with Bubba, but it's the less expensive version of Yeti and it works for me. So anyway, um, so what I want to talk about today, like I said, is how I get my over or how I got my over under. I'm going to see if I can check out anyone joining with me here today. I saw a thumb go by like this. <laughs> I just don't know who it is. So um, how I got my over under. Basically, I want to talk about how I got my overeating under control. So for as long as I can remember, I have been an overeater. And I never really, I guess, realized it or acknowledged it. Probably until, I don't know, maybe into my teen years where I realized that I was doing it. Um, just a little background about how I grew up and maybe kind of where this might actually have come from. And again, I'm going to tell a lot of stories uh, involving my childhood and my family and, of course, my parents. I'm going to preface all of the past and future stories about them with, I love my parents. They are awesome. I would not trade them for the world and I owe like who I am to them and who I am, how I think the way I interact with the world in large part to them. So they have been a major blessing, but hey, no one is perfect and we're products of our parents, right? So that could be said of all of us. This glare is driving me nuts. Okay. 
maybe that's okay. Okay. I have like this, I have a, I know I'm going off on like all these tangents. I have a happy light because I'm from Illinois. You see that? Ooh. And um, in Illinois, there's like weeks and weeks of no sun. And so now that I'm in Texas where the sun lives in the winter, um, I actually am surprised that I still need it sometimes. Like I said, it's been maybe two days of gray, but that's enough. And that's maybe why I'm getting down. But coming back from the tangent, um, growing up in my house, there was, I'm not going to say it was an unspoken rule. It was definitely a spoken rule, um, or at least it was enforced that, you know, we had family dinners together pretty much every night, which is really awesome. Um, but the rule was enforced anyway, if it was never explicitly said, is that, you know, you finish the food that's on your plate. You are not done with dinner until all your food is gone. And they didn't pile, you know, mounds of food on our plate. I mean, from the age that we were able to serve ourselves, we served ourselves. You know, we got what we wanted. We didn't, we weren't made to eat like mounds of food. So, but the rule was, and I found this out the hard way as I'm going to share, uh, you eat all the food on your plate and you're not done until it's gone, you know? Um, to the point that even like my grandmother who, you know, grew up in the depression, I totally understand this. I hate throwing away food to this day for this very reason, but you know, she made a wonderful home cooked country dinner. And if we as kids got, you know, we were full, we couldn't eat the rest of our food. She'd be like, okay, pass that down. And she would get her cornbread and she would like wipe the plate clean. And you know, there was going to be no food left on anyone's plate. We don't waste food. So that I think that, um, depression era mindset, which is awesome and very frugal. Um, I think that was definitely like passed down to her daughter, which is my mom and therefore enforced in my house is you don't leave food on the plate and you're not even done until you eat it all. So, um, I have a story, um, that I like to call ketchup in my soup, <laughs> which sounds gross. And it was, um, so it was one of those evenings where we were having kind of like an easy dinner, um, you know, soup and grilled cheese sandwiches and, you know, just stuff that's kind of not fancy, <laughs> easy to prepare. And I don't know how old I was. I may have been about eight years old. A lot of my stories happened when I was eight. So um, anyway, I somehow ended up the last person at the table from dinner. And I still had this bowl, probably like half of the bowl left of tomato soup, which I loved tomato soup. I still do to this day. Um, but I guess it was like I was full, you know. And the soup had gotten cold and I just wasn't interested in it anymore. Everyone else had got down from the table. I just wanted to go watch Fraggle Rock or whatever was going on on TV. Um, yes, 80s. Um, but I remember my dad saying, you can't get down from the table yet. You haven't finished your soup. And I'm like, well, you know, I don't, I'm not hungry anymore. I'm full. He's like, well, just finish it. There's not that much left. I'm like, ugh. So like every 10 minutes, I think I would manage a bite, right? So he'd come back in the kitchen a few minutes later and like the soup had not, like the level had not moved. He's like, you need to eat your soup. I'm like, dad, it's cold. He's like, well, put it in the microwave. I was like, oh my gosh. So I put the bowl of soup in the microwave and so it was hot. But then I didn't, I still like, you know, I wasn't hungry anymore. I intrinsically knew this, even if I couldn't really communicate that apparently clearly to him. Um, I still was not feeling it, you know? So I guess in my eight year old mind, let me put some more flavor in it. I like big flavors. So don't know why this is what I grabbed, but you know, tomato theme going on there. I grabbed some ketchup and squirted some ketchup in there and stirred it up. Maybe it was too hot. I don't know. I was trying to cool it down. Not sure if logic played a part in that at all, but added some ketchup to my tomato soup and then I didn't like the result and so I still couldn't eat it. My dad comes back in the kitchen, why have you not finished your soup? And I was like, it tastes bad. <laughs> He's like, what did you do? I'm like, I put some ketchup in it. He's like, that's your fault. You put the ketchup in it, you eat the food. I don't know who gave up if I just like shoved it down or if he just eventually like 
surrendered or what. Like, it was like a showdown. But, I mean, obviously I eventually got down from the table or I would not be here with you today. <laughs> but, oh my goodness, like, I wasn't hungry. I wasn't feeling it, like. But I still had to finish it. And I'm not saying that parents are evil for making their kids finish their dinner. Like, I probably would have been hungry an hour later if I hadn't, if that's what I did. I blocked that out. I don't remember the result of that evening, but I'm just saying that that part of my brain was working. That part of my brain telling me I'm full, or at least I'm no longer hungry, it was working. Like, I wasn't born with a faulty, like, appetite switch in my head. It was clearly working. Um, but I'm, I'm starting to think now, looking back, that maybe that rule in my family um, and my innate desire to please as the oldest child, um, kind of created this, I don't know, like an inability to recognize or acknowledge that appetite part of my brain telling me whether or not I'm hungry or whether or not I'm full. It's almost like I learned to just turn that off or ignore it, you know? Um, I don't know, just to get the job done, right? Like, job, finish food. You're telling me I'm full? Override, you know, must finish food, must obey parents, that kind of thing. Um, so again, that was probably around eight years old, you know, second, third grade. Flash forward to, this probably started in middle school. Um, I am an introvert, um, and that used to mean that I was shy and very awkward around people. Um, now I'm definitely not shy. I'm very outspoken and maybe a little too outspoken sometimes, but I'm not shy anymore. I just, I'm still an introvert. Well, I still like reach my max capacity of like human interaction in any given like chunk of time. So, um, in middle school, you know, every day after school, I'd get off the bus, I'd come in the house. And I was just like, okay, I am so done with today. I am so done with, you know, six classes and, you know, trying to be a cool kid but not and failing at, you know, social interaction and all that. I just wanted to come home, be away from people, recharge, and get back to my comfort zone, you know? So uh, my mom at the time was like a childcare provider, so she'd have um, different little kids in our house during the day, like, you know, nannying them or whatever. And so this was the time that all the babies were asleep, and so therefore so was she. So she would take her afternoon nap on the couch in the living room. And we had a small house, so the kitchen, the living room, they're like, you know, right there next to each other. Um, I think I was looking for a way to soothe myself or maybe just reward myself from getting through the day. Um, there was also some bullying that was going on as well, so I'm not sure when exactly this pattern happened, but I would go to the kitchen, open the refrigerator as quietly as possible because I didn't want to wake up my mom, and I would look for anything sweet, anything that I thought, I need this in my stomach right now. I need to taste this. I need the comfort of this. And um, more often there, than not, there was some leftover like cake or pie or something sweet in the fridge or like pumpkin bread or this or that or the other um, on the counter. I don't know. There was always seemed to be something. And if there wasn't, there was ice cream. So I remember trying to snack silently. And it's not just, you know, out of consideration for my mom. I don't want to wake her up, you know. Bless the woman, she needs to take her nap. I mean, yeah, she did, but I remember what I was thinking and feeling while I was doing this, and it was shame. Yes, I'm going back there again. Um, I remember very specifically feeling like I cannot let her know that I'm eating this food because that's shameful. I'm not supposed to eat junk food. I'm not supposed to eat this unhealthy food because, you know, at that point I already had kind of a stigma about my body and I've shared some of those stories with y'all already. Um, and I've gotten some of those, you know, messages from her as well, but it's not just that I got a piece of cake. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that would have been fine. It's not just that I got 
one square of the dessert and put it on my plate. I would go back for seconds and thirds as quietly as possible. Like I learned how to open the refrigerator and like open things to where like it didn't make the noise. Like I thought I was like 007, like sneaking in there or whatever. I would go back for seconds. I would go back for thirds. And by the end of it, really, I was just like, screw this. I'm eating out of the container. And I polished the whole thing off, like more often than not. And that just became for me like a source of comfort, like a guilty pleasure. But I definitely remember this secrecy tied to it and this shame, like no one can find out I'm doing this. If I wake her up and she comes in here and sees what I'm doing, like she's going to think I'm a fat pig or she's going to think that I just have no self-control or that I'm just trying to get fat. I'm like, I'm too young to be thinking these things, but I was thinking these things. I share these stories because they play into the struggles that I continued to have throughout high school, throughout college, throughout post-college. Um, into my professional life and even into married life. Oh my goodness. It's like I still don't get it when I'm full. I still don't get it when I'm not hungry anymore. Hi, person who joined me. Um, I feel like I haven't, haven't learned to resuscitate that little button in my brain or that little trigger in my brain that says, okay, you're not hungry anymore okay, you're not starving, you're not, you're like, you know, and that to me has been so hard because I have gone like this with my weight up and down, um, I'll talk about this more, you know, in, in future videos, but there have been three, like, big times in my life where I've made huge efforts to lose weight and seen, um, seen a lot of results, but again, it will go like this. So I'll ease up and I'll fall back into my overeating patterns. So overeating for me and nutrition in general has been one of my major hangups. Um, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this. Maybe comment below um, like, heck yeah, or a story of my life or something if you feel comfortable doing that. Um, no one's going to judge you. I mean, I'm spilling it all, right? Um, I don't know how to shift. <laughs> I didn't know how to make the shift from I am no longer hungry to, you know, be able to push my plate away with food on the plate. Like that is, even today, that's really hard for me. And I'm not going to say that I'm like perfect at this. Um, but I do really want to share something with you that um, I discovered. When was this? This was probably in February of this year. I know it's this recent. <laughs> um, a tool that I discovered this year that has really helped me retrain my brain as far as what an acceptable amount or what a realistic amount of food on my plate should be. Because I really think had I just tried to eat a normal amount of food and clean my plate that way, I wouldn't have struggled so much with my weight. But I would get like, if you hear the term like your eyes are bigger than your stomach, like I would get these huge portions and I would go back for seconds, like without fail, just because I wanted to feel full. I'm like, I think I even got to the point where I didn't care that I was getting the signal. Not only was I turning it off and being numb to it, I was like, Psh, I don't care if I'm full, like something else in me needs to feel full. If that makes sense. My stomach feels full, but my, it's probably my emotions, guys. Me and my emotions have like love-hate relationship. We'll talk more about that later too. But I think I was trying to feel, fill a void in my emotions. Um, and I was trying to do that through food. Logically, it makes no sense. But, you know, maybe I'm not as logical as I pride myself on being. Um, so I say all that to say, if I haven't totally gotten off of track, that I needed a way to reprogram my brain and reprogram my eyes even into what is a healthy portion of food. Like how much spaghetti do I need? How much fruit do I need? How much butter or whatever it is that I'm eating 
is like a normal size. And I think in the US, we've definitely gotten away with this with our super sizing and our king sizing and, you know, big gulps and all of that. That um, if you were to go to like Europe or other countries, um, their portion sizes are so much smaller and more manageable, but they like take longer to eat their food and they enjoy it. And people who come to America from other countries will comment like, dang, you I mean, they don't talk like that because they're French or whatever. <laughs> you know, you guys have such huge portions. Like why in the world? Like I cannot eat that. Like I eat a third of that and take the rest home with me or something. Um, so just our concept visually of what a portion is, is out of control. And I think it's, again, played into my overeating. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, what I want to share with you guys today is the actual tool that I've been using. Um, and I've kind of gotten away from it these past couple of weeks because I've been tweaking the way I eat and like figuring out some new things, but I'm going to incorporate these back in. Um, probably starting Monday when I figure out how that all works. Um, but I want to share these with you. I love them because they're super colorful. I'm going to try to share them as um, clearly as I can on the computer. But uh, these are what's called portion control containers. And I love that they're super colorful. Like, obviously, you've noticed from this group. Um... And from the things I share with y'all, that I love bright colors. So I, I love that these are bright colors. I want to see if I can put them up here and show you. So I love these portion control containers. It's really a system that works all together. Um, I love them because they take the guesswork out of how much I need to put on my plate. Okay. So these are, I think they're dishwasher safe. At least I've been washing them in the dishwasher. They are containers, and this is probably backwards to you because I'm on selfie mode, but this says fruits. So this container represents one serving of fruits. So berries are one of my favorite fruits to eat. Basically, whatever fruit you can fit in here, that's a serving, okay? That probably doesn't look that big to you, but let me assure you, this is probably about an inch and a half, two inches tall. Once you get this full, and then you put it on your plate like it's a lot more than you think it is. So there's a purple one is for fruits. The red one is for proteins. And again, it maybe looks a little small, but I put my Greek yogurt in here. That's a protein. Um, I don't smash my meat in here. <laughs> um, there are kind of some other guidelines for meats because you don't want to like shove it in here. Um... Usually about four ounces is what's recommended, but um, you could put, um, I can't remember if you put almonds in here. I think our almonds go in the carb one. Um, so here's the carbs, carbohydrates. Yes, this is a lot smaller. We tend to overdo our carbohydrates in the American diet. So compare the carbs to the protein. You're definitely eating a larger portion of protein. Not a surprise, the veggies container is the largest of these containers because we just don't get enough of them. Um, a lot of what we eat um, is plant-based. Even the meat that we eat, they eat, you know, the, the animals that we're eating, they have eaten plants. So it comes as no surprise that we should be getting larger portions of vegetables. And then the smaller ones, you're going to have your healthy fats. I don't think I've ever put anything in the healthy fats container other than avocado. Like me and avocado are like BFFs. So this is for healthy fats. Um, avocado is not the only thing you can put in here. Um, we'll talk more about that in a second. And then just for convenience, they give you two containers that say seeds and dressings. So this is great like for your salads. I think they give you two like if you want to put like dressing in one and maybe like sesame seeds or something in the other and be able to take them on the go for lunch. So does this mean that you only get to eat one serving of vegetables, one serving of proteins, one serving of fruits, and one carb every day? No, absolutely not. Um, there is a plan. There is a way of figuring out how many servings of fruit 
and vegetables, etc. How many servings of healthy fats um, is recommended for each person each day. So you're not just getting one of each <laughs> um, allotment of food. Um, I'm going to be sharing this um, later on, but there's a way that you will figure out according to, you know, how much you weigh and what you're trying to do, what type of exercise you do, um, what the appropriate amount of each um, container food-wise you would get each day. And like I said, they hold way more than you think they do. Um, so what I wanted to do today, this is the first time I've done this, so um, just hear me out. I wanted to let you know that um, these are actually going to be available for you to purchase through a link that I'm going to be posting here in a few minutes. I obviously can't do that like during my live video, but um, I'm going to be posting the link here shortly to where you can get all of these containers, which is called the portion control containers, the portion control system. Um, guys, this really helped me get my brain and my eyes around what an appropriate portion is. Um, honestly, I couldn't finish most of my food every day, even with these portions. Like it's, it's that much more than you think it looks like on camera. Like, to, I think I had like, um, I got to eat like three carbs a day and four veggies and three fruits and four proteins or something like that. So even with these portion control containers, which was a lot less than I was eating before, like I still found it hard to eat all the food because it was a lot. So you will not starve. <laughs> you definitely will not starve on this program. And I was kind of on one of the lower ends of like how many portions you get. So if you're, you know, looking to lose a lot of weight and you're starting you know, a lot higher, you're going to get a lot more of each, um, like, allowable portions per day. So, you will not starve. Um, so, these are um, going to be available for purchase. Like I said, I'm going to put a link up. Guys, this is super easy. This is the whole set plus what I'm going to give you um, to go along with it. It's just $34.95. Um, that doesn't include tax or shipping, but that is according to, you know, where you live and your taxes. So, I can't give you, like... The total total because I don't know where you live like what your taxes are and stuff like that um, or what the shipping would be but generally you get this within five to seven business days so really you can get started like the very next week after you um, order your product so um, to make this a really sweet deal for y'all because I mean I believe in these they really really help me get my eating under control and to realize what what an actual portion uh, is. Um, I'm going to throw in some stuff from me to go along with this. Um, so not only are you going to get the whole portion control container system, um, I'm going to give you like a key or um, like the calculation guide to figure out how many uh, portions you're going to get of each um, container. So you do not have to tell me your weight. You don't have to tell me any of that. I give you the information that you, therefore, you know, will take and figure out for yourself. So it's a secret for you. Um, so I'm going to give you like a portion key to figure out your daily allotment of each container. Um, so that's thing number one that you're going to get when you purchase the portion container program. Um, number two, I'm going to give you an exclusive video um, to walk you through how to use the portion containers, um, kind of what you can do with them, um, like a step by step, and I think I might even do like a little live video um, of like a recipe, so how you can use these in real life. Um, the third thing I'm going to give you is a mindset guide. Um, basically, it's going to be like 10 ways that you can curb your cravings without food. Like I said, a lot of the reasons that I started overeating as a young person um, originally had nothing to do with actual physical hunger. A lot of it was I was trying to fill an emotional void. I was trying to reward myself for getting through a hard, unpopular day in middle school. Um, 
a lot of secrecy again surrounding my eating. So there was a lot of reasons other than physical hunger that made me crave, you know, eating and overeating. Um, so I'm going to give you a mindset guide, which is 10 ways to curb your cravings without food. Um, and as a special bonus, actually, that comes with the portion control containers is a recipe guide that's going to have 101 recipes that are built around the container system. So you don't have to be like measuring and you know, measuring spoons and measuring cups flying everywhere. Um, this is a, a, a cookbook or a recipe book rather called Fix 8 because this is like a portion fix program. And the creator of the program came out as well with um, a recipe book that she put together with her brother who is um, a famous chef. So they definitely have like that winning team combination thing going on. So you are going to get all of the portion control containers that I showed you today. You're going to get the Fixate recipe book with 101 recipes based off of the portion control containers. Okay, so that comes together. That Those are the two physical things that will arrive at your home together. Um, and I am throwing in three bonus things as well. So you're going to get this actually before you get the physical items. Um, you're going to get the portion fix key to figure out how many portions you get a day. Um, I'm probably going to throw in some extra information with that as well, such as what are the best and healthiest versions of each food that you could be eating. So yeah, you eat carbs, but which is a better carb to eat? You know, white bread or a sweet potato are all carbohydrates created equally? No. So I'm going to give you some tips as to what the best carbs are what the best proteins are for you, um, along with how many portions of each, um, how many like portions you get of each according to your weight, which is your secret. Um, so that's thing one. Thing two, I'm going to give you um, specific or exclusive access to a video kind of walking you through how to use the containers. And I'm going to do a live recipe video so you will get access to that. And three, you're going to get the mindset guide. It's just going to be an e-guide. Um, ten ways to curb your cravings without using food. So really, guys, you're getting five things, um, all for the price of $34.95 plus your shipping and taxes. So I'm going to go ahead and post the link, but I want you to know that the three bonus items that I'm including, the um, the key and the like ideal types of foods to put in these. Um, that's one, the intro, exclusive intro video, and the mindset guide. Those three things are only available if you make your purchase by this Sunday at 10.59 p.m. Central Time, which is basically midnight Eastern Time. Um, you can feel free to make your purchase after that point, but I'm going to throw in the, the three extras from me personally um, for anyone who makes the purchase by Sunday at 1059 Central, 1159 Eastern. So um, I just wanted to share that with you because that's a tool that has really, really helped me get my overeating under control. And because this group is about mindset, I feel like if we don't get our mindset under control, we don't get our the way that we see our food and the way that we are in control of what we're doing, if we don't get that on straight, then it's going to make everything else so much harder. You're going to be, you know, climbing a much steeper hill than you're already climbing. So, um, again, don't put ketchup in your soup. Don't put it in the microwave. If you're full, it's okay to leave the food on the plate. Save it for later. Give it to your dog. Trust me. He wants it. Um... Put it in your garden, let it fertilize, <laughs> let it contribute to the life cycle, but please, please, please start recognizing if there's still food on your plate, maybe just stop. Stop before you even feel full and say, not only am I full yet, but am I even hungry anymore? Start thinking about if I am full, if I'm not hungry anymore, what is pushing me to clean my plate? What is pushing me to go back for seconds? Let's say you're watching TV and suddenly 
you want to eat some chips. It happens. Ask yourself, what in the world, why do I want to eat these chips right now? Did I just see a commercial for potato chips? Like, are they that great at marketing now that just the sight of them makes me crave them? Um, am I really hungry? Am I craving something salty because it's that time of the month? I mean, that happens, right? That's real. Um, am I eating them because I'm bored? Am I wanting to eat them because I just want something crunchy? Like... Will carrots do the trick? You know, what is it that's really making you want to eat this? Is it because someone else on the couch next to you is eating something and there's that, like, social pressure or, ooh, that's a good idea. I smelled your food. Now I'm hungry too. So I want us to start thinking about if food or overeating is a hang-up for you like it's been for me. I want you to know that there is a way that you can get past it. Guys, is this the only way to get past overeating? No, I'm not trying to pretend like this is the only way, right? Um, what I'm saying is that this has worked for me and it's something that I continue to use and will continue to use on a daily basis as long as I feel like it's a struggle for me. I still overeat. There are still days where I just don't care and I'm like, I don't care, I'm just going to eat this even though I know that I shouldn't. So it, I'm not perfect, right? Please, please, please comment if you have any questions. Um, look for the link um, that I'm going to be putting up here in a few minutes um, that will link you to the page where you can purchase. Again, you're going to get all of the portion control containers in their colorful glory. Um, you're going to get a Fix 8 recipe book, which is based off of the containers. It's going to have 101 recipes. That is actually physically going to come to your house or apartment or van down by the river. And if you uh, make your purchase by 10.59 p.m. Central Time this Sunday or 11.59 Eastern Time, um, I'm going to throw in for you your portion fix guide to figure out how many of each portion you need each day and what the best items for each container are going to be, right? Sweet potato versus white bread, which is better. Um, I'm going to give you exclusive access to a, an intro video about how to use the containers and do a little um, recipe demo with you. And then the third thing you're going to get um, as a bonus for purchasing by Sunday at 10.59 Central PM is 10 ways to curb your cravings without food. So I'm here to help you with your weight, your fitness, your health through your mindset. So I'm going to help you with the mindset that wraps around the overeating, that wraps around the nutrition. Uh, my goal for you with these is that, yes, you learn a little bit more realistic portion sizes, um, but also that you take a look at the reasons behind your overeating, if you do, if you do overeat, and to really make it a process of thinking it through and finding the core reasons of, of overeating, if it's not just boredom, if it's not just... I have nothing better to do. There's some emotional or mental reason why you're wanting to eat more than your body really needs. And that's why, that's why we gain weight. So anyways, uh, before I start rattling on and repeating myself even more, I'm going to go ahead and sign off.